Hi, welcome to Podpad Studios. So what have we been up to? What have we been building? What have we been doing? Right, so we've been stupidly busy actually with lots of other projects that you guys are gonna see some of in the new year. Um, loads of refurbishment on bits and bobs. So K9, for example, we put some posts up a few weeks ago about what we've been doing with K9. He was one of the very first robots that I had built. And then obviously a number of years ago, he was assimilated by the Borg and became K7 of nine or K7 of Unimatrix nine to give him his full title. Um, but he never had a, an electronics revamp. He had his original electronics in him and up to very recently was running on his original batteries. So he was suffering a bit. Now, what I did with the other droids um, and the robots is I have a system on them that allows them when they're not being driven to be displayed. And the idea is that we can, instead of just powering them down, we can have them all powered up with all the lights flashing and all that going on, but it doesn't draw any power from the batteries. And it's just a little system that I came up with that allows you to bypass the internal batteries, but still have the power and everything running. That system is now being fitted to K9, so he can now be displayed without using any power. But obviously, once you flick a switch, he can go onto his internal batteries and then we can drive him around. And he hasn't got a very big battery, so he can't run for very long, but that's just the nature of being a small dog. Anyway, so yeah, K9's had a few bits and bobs. Tiffany, as obviously we're gonna be doing some shows in the new year with Tiffany, and they're really exciting with what we've got planned with those. And so her object recognition uh, bits and bobs have all been, we're playing around with a lot of that, doing some quite interesting stuff with, with that. So what else have I been doing? Well, I've also been doing this. Now, what is this? Though, so, if you've been following the blog, you'll know what I'm about to talk about. And the blog, basically, for those of you who don't know where it is, go onto the Podpad Studios main webpage, go down to the bottom, you see all the icons along the bottom, you know, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and you'll see the icon for the blog. Click on it, and then just, it's a blog. Just follow the pages, you can see the photographs of how this has been developing over the months. So, why? Why a tank? So, I don't really know. I've got a bit of a fascination with these sort of things. As you know, when I talked about this a lot, when I built Tiffany, I love tracked vehicles and the idea of building track systems is fascinates me. And so I just thought I'd love to build a full size tank, but apart from the fact that I don't have the space and I can't really justify it at the moment, um, I thought, let's go for the next best thing. Let's go for a scale model. So this is a one sixth scale I decided to do. Now I looked around at one sixth scale models and what I could do and, you know, obviously you can buy them. There's companies like uh, Armatech uh, based down in Dorset, I think, or somewhere down south. Uh, amazing models, incredible models, all metal models, but very, very expensive, as you will know. Um, and obviously there's little plastic kits of tanks. I wanted to do something a bit different so the aim was to, to build something reasonably large scale, but not too big that I couldn't actually transport it anywhere if I needed to take it anywhere. And obviously I didn't really want to do anything small because that's just not really the sort of things that I do. It also has to be fully functional. The other thing that I wanted to do with this build is make it entirely out of metal. Now, there are some pros and cons of doing things like that, which if you follow the blog, you'll see what they've been. It's been quite a challenge to get to this stage. And this isn't finished by any means. This is a long, long way to go. There's no electronics in here. You know, it, there's a long way to go. And there was a lot of thinking behind this, a lot of planning, a lot of trying to work out. As you can see, the tracks here, I'm gonna try and lift them up, but they're insanely heavy. And the idea of the track system was to try to come up with something that, was very different. Not that nobody had done before, but that would work. So that for those of you that don't know how about tanks, track or tracked vehicles in general, they basically, all they try to do is pull their tracks off. That's all they do. When they go around corners, going in a straight line, backwards, forwards, no problem at all, but go around a corner and all they want to do is rip these tracks off. The lateral forces on them are huge. So I wanted to build something with some powerful motors at scale that would actually function as well as the real thing. And that, that was my challenge. So I wasn't gonna build something that was, if you like, following an existing tank design. In fact, this is inspired by four different tank designs, which again, you, you can read about on the blog. Um, and I came up with an interesting way to build the tracks. And it's not like Tiffany's tracks. 
in that it uses comp composite materials and a lot of 3D printing, this is all metal. And it works. Um, I've done a couple of videos which I've put up on YouTube of this of, of the base being tested. And it's in, it insanely strong and it so it really does work. The only thing is the track is slightly out of scale proportion to the model, but I'm not building anything kind of to scale in that respect anyway. In fact, you could argue, I think there were some, I think there were some World War II tanks, I think that had double width tracks and they were experimented with for a while. And in a way that's kind of what I've done here, simply because of the way that I've designed this, I couldn't get the strength and make this smaller. The tracks are um, really good fun. I will go into a lot more detail on this in future videos. I'm not going to do that now. So those of you asking me, how do I do it? How did I make it? I'll show you. The tank itself, everything is made out of metal, apart from the rubber wheels, obviously. Everything is metal. And the other thing that I wanted to do with it is build it out of recycled materials. So believe it or not, this, this, this was a dishwasher. So all of these panels were the panels of a dishwasher. The side of the dishwasher, the base of the dishwasher, the back metal of the dishwasher. The main structure underneath, the steel structure underneath, is old table legs um, that I managed to get hold of. Um, everything is just, I mean you can see, you can't really, oh actually I can unhook it. Probably guess what that is. It's the back of a fridge which is now going to become the back of, actually not the back of a fridge, it's an extractor hood. And it reminds me because there's part of the extractor hood still with the grease on it. Um, the idea is just to, to try to do something. I, my, I, I didn't start off intending to build it with scrap metal, but it just occurred to me that why not? There's plenty of it lying around. Why do I need to go out and buy pristine, brand new sheets of metal and whatever, which is gonna cost quite a lot of money, when I can fabricate things. And I haven't done model making, as I said, like this for a long time. Um, little things like, um, none of this stuff is stuck on at me, but these little things like this are all welded together. So this is, this is just metal and it's all just welded together and it's all kind of then roughened up. It's all just got an etch primer on it at the moment. Um, and it'll all be painted up when it's finished. But yeah, that's kind of what I've been working on. So I, had, I did have a couple of comments about what am I going to, what's it going to do? Well, it will be full radio control, but I'm going to go one step further than that. So it will have a working gun. Now, I don't mean working as in it's going to fire 120 mil round projectiles, although it is all to scale. It is going to actually fire blank rounds. So it will, uh, when I say blank rounds, it, they're like primer uh, cartridges that I've used in other projects, and it will fire those. So it will create a muzzle flash, smoke, and a, and a bang, but there'll be nothing firing out of it. Obviously, that would be pointless doing that, and it'd be a bit reckless, really. Um, everything will function, you know, just like a real tank. You see all the turrets and everything moves. However, it will have two modes. What I am going to do, um, excuse me one moment while I leave the set, and then I come back with the modern wonders of science. Now, what I have got here, something I dug up from years ago. Now, for those of you, the older members watching this, will know that in the old days, people used to build drones. Now, I know people build racing drones now, but most of people associate drones with going out and buying a DJI drone and and that's a drone. In the old days, you had to actually build them. You had to put the motors in, you had to build the bits, and you had to build the flight control systems in. And I bought this many, many years ago. And what it is, is a very clever little flight control system. And it has a GPS unit. It has a transmission unit, which can then transmit to the laptop computer that the software is plugged into. Very, very clever bit of kit, to be honest. And here's the fun bit about this. It can be designed not just to run 
flying aircraft, but it can run ground-based vehicles. So I'm going to fit this electronic system and, you know, lots of other electronics to this and make it autonomous. So I couldn't do it with Tiffany. I couldn't, it was just too heavy. This is still going to be heavy. Believe it or not, this is going to be weighing in about 100 kilos. It already weighs what's on the table here, 70 kilos. And that's without anything in it, any batteries or anything else inside there. And it's not finished. So yes, it's heavy, but it's not as heavy as Tiffany, which was up in the 300 kilo range. An autonomous vehicle that we'll be able to, via pro programmed waypoints, go to certain points, rotate the turret and fire. The other thing is I'm going to have gyro systems in it. So this will actually be able to travel over terrain and like a real tank, the gun will stay fixed on the object that it's going to fire at, which will be programmed via the waypoints. So wherever you drive it, the, road, the turret will just auto rotate and it will stay fixed on that. And it's just something I thought would be good fun to do. Um, I've done it in other projects. Let's apply it to this. I actually, I'm going to use this system as well. So up here, this is like on a real tank. It's a little bit that you can't really see that, but it kind of rotates around. It's a scanning system. That's going to have a camera in it. And I'm going to use an object recognition system that we, again, a similar system that we used on Tiffany to get it to recognize certain objects as threat or not threat. And then I can write a little bit of code and get it to drive towards those things or away from those things. Um, sound, it'll have lots of sound on it. Um, oh, I've got, must admit, something I do need to share. Again, excuse me. This. I bought one of these. I don't know whether you can see that. This is awesome. This is a smoke machine. Now, the thing about this is that it obviously uses um, oil-based fluid in this little container up here, but this is battery powered. Now, in the past, these have been incredibly expensive. This wasn't expensive. And the smaller ones that are usually this sort of size are based on vapes and they don't really produce a huge amount of smoke. Um, this thing does though, this thing is awesome. So it, I was gonna put it in here to generate the effect of the smoke from the engines. And then I thought, well, that's pretty stupid actually, because why build a modern day tank and have it give smoky engines? It's not a two stroke motorcycle, you know. Um, so this is gonna act, it's gonna go in here, but it's gonna act as a smoke field. So the tank can put out a smoke screen and I've found a way to control this via the radio. And it, it's just amazing. I'm going to give you a little demo. In fact, I'll leave you with my little demo of this. And obviously, I'll keep you updated with what I'm doing with this. This, is, this has been really, really good fun. As I said, it's kind of like a side project for me. This is just something that I've wanted to build, and it's a side project. It's not built for any show or any particular reason. It's built because I want to build it. It's that simple. Um, but... I'm going to have a bit of fun with it, putting some of the tech in it. And as I've always said, if you're going to build something full sized, best to build a model first. Anyway, here we go. Watch this. It just produces. <coughs> it's not that bad, actually. See you later.